I'm intending to make you a pipeline, a rich pipeline that goes through and that takes my resources and brings them out to other people. That's really my intention, God says. It's to enrich others. And I want you to consider for a second an example, I guess, in, uh, that I, it's close to my heart. The example of considering a medical student becoming actual, an actual physician. You know, when you're a medical student, you learn a whole bunch of stuff. It's a mountain of knowledge, and it's becoming bigger and bigger every day. But after you finish four years of medical school, as far as I know, no state in the Union will allow you to practice medicine. Just because you finish medical school and you pass the national boards, they will not allow you to practice. You know why? Because book knowledge is not good enough. We have a book in front of us, and we think just because we know the Bible that we are Christians, that we are actually the pipelines that God wants. And I'm here to tell you that is not, that is not good enough. You need to be immersed. This is what internship is all about. <laughs> it's not the book learning in medical school that makes a physician a physician. It's mainly because of internship and residency that a medical student becomes a physician, a practicing physician. And I want to tell you that this is June and tomorrow and next month is July 1st. It's a very dangerous thing to be in the ER on July 1st. Because <laughs> what happens on July 1st? That's when the interns come in. <laughs> I warned you, okay, I warned you. the new crop of angels come in. There it is. Ready to go. <laughs> okay, so what happens is that at all times, under all circumstances, moods, level of consciousness, under pressure, fatigue, sleepiness, or at the peak of their energy levels, super conscious levels, or whatever, a doctor can actually interview, examine, and find out what to do for a patient. Why? Because they've gone through that training. You know, people to this day are fighting the system. They're saying, this is an archaic system. It should not happen. But I'm here to tell you that it's a good thing that, that is happening because you need to be immersed. You need to be completely immersed into being able to, with your eyes closed, to figure out what's going on with the patient so that you can treat them the right way, so that you can actually, the, the art and the science of medicine come together so that you have amazing results. Amen. And it's not any different for you and me when it comes to our Christian faith. It's not any different for you and me because God says, I want you to reflect my generosity. I want you, on your heart, I want it to ache and hurt for the things that my heart aches and hurts in this world. And if you do that, you're not just a book Christian, you're not just a Bible Christian, we're a true follower of Christ. You become my arms, you become my heart, you become my embrace, you become my feet. You become my eyes and my ears. You become my voice. Now God wants to do the same thing with you and me. He wants to train us, saturate us to our deepest levels with His heart of compassion and love and generosity and surrender and service to others. He wants us to become pipelines of all that He has to give to a hurting world to the suffering world. The people that are alienated from Him and have no clue who God is and what He has done for them. There's many millions today that are still not able to understand or know God because of that. But not only this, not only redefining generosity, but God also wants to, has to reflect God's heart. He said, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Amen. That was Jesus Christ, the perfect human, the perfect God, Son. He said, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And I know a lot of times the audience say, well, that means complete. So don't worry about it. You don't have to be perfect. But God says, no, I want you to be perfect. Because my love is perfect, and if you're a pipeline, the love that you're going to pipe down the line has to be perfect. Hmm. It's got to be a pipeline of grace, generosity, of goodness, of giving. 
It has to be perfectly loving, perfectly serving, perfectly sacrificing, perfectly surrendering, becoming just like Him. Are you in? It's a high draw. It's high, pretty high up there, right? Keep in mind that it's not the pipeline's responsibility to generate the oil or natural gas or mine coals. It's not your <coughs> ability that God is counting on. It's not my ability to be generous or my ability to be loving that God counts on. He says that all I want you to do, Henry, is to just Put, take down the line. Just open the, open your arms, open your heart, and give what I'm giving you. It's not out of nothing. Uh, only God creates out of nothing. Only God brings things out of nothing. Human beings work with things that already exist. That's the difference between a creature and God. God wants us to be the perfect conduit, without resistance. So that the mind product can flow from the source to the intended processing plant. No sticky fingers. No hoarding. God realizes that all of us need money and resources to live on. He even gave Moses laws that allow the farming animals milling grain to actually be fed. He said, do not muzzle an ox while it's treading out the grain. And the worker deserves his wages. God knows that we need money. We need to eat. We need to, uh, to uh, make ends meet. So he established these rules. And so that he can train us to live life in the best way possible. Remember this, Paul writes to the Corinthians, the rich Corinthians. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. See, that's a pipeline, you know. <laughs> if you allow the opening to be wide, okay, on both ends, God is going to just blow you away. I mean, God is going to blow us away with what He's going to go through. This is what I want to do. From now on, this is what I want to do. This is what my life, I, want, I want my life to be from now on. So many times when we read or hear scripture passages like these, we tend to think about, well, we have possessions and money right now. So, well, I don't have much. Well, let it flow and see what happens. Yes, amen. We don't have much because we hold it. Those are reservoirs. Those are not pipelines. When you stop and think that making 40000 a year will accumulate to 400000 in 10 years, now, 40,000, I think, is still, if you have a family of four, I think 40,000 is your poverty level, mm -hmm. according to the government. But 40,000 a year is 400,000 in 10 years. It's 800,000 in 20 years, 1.6 million in 40 years. That's the money that goes through our hands. Many of us are making a lot more than that. Praise God. Amen. Praise God for that. Put it in another way, how efficient are you as a pipeline? Are there holes in the walls that spill and waste the precious cargo? The higher the pressure, the more the leakage? Any kinks that stop the flow or slow it down to a trickle or any right angles? You know, when pipelines are, are manufactured, they don't have any right angles because that's going to hit that angle, that, 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 uh, that, angle that, that corner and it's going to slow down. God wants us to be open up, straight with Him, and straight with others. Now, Ray and I started giving to AMG International and World Vision within a year after we arrived in Pasadena in 1981. We were led to give first to two children and then to four, living in different parts of the world. And over the years, we would get pictures. I mean, how many of you have pictures of kids in your refrigerator <laughs> that are not yours, <laughs> but you are? Amen. That's right. That's it. You know? And over the years, we get these pictures and we get these updates and what's going on. And it's, 
It's been wonderful, you know, and we've been putting up, I've been putting up on the wall, on our, on our refrigerator as part of our kids as well, and it's been an amazing journey. We trusted these two organizations to do what they promised to do, to go in and help kids that are suffering. They, the poorest of the poor, they need to be taken care of. There's all kinds of health issues and food issues and all that. We learned some tidbits from those letters that we get from World Vision and uh, American Mission to Greeks. But it was not until this week when I picked up the latest issue of Christianity Today that I was thrilled to learn that our money did much more than ever that we ever imagined. There's an article that I would like you all to read. It's a front page news for Christianity Today. The article says, does child sponsorship work? Does child sponsorship work? Finally, an economist and a, a team of, of scientists actually did amazing work through Compassion International. They studied 1,382 children who were in sponsoring programs. And they found out that sponsoring a child works. So I'm so thankful to God that He makes it possible for people in this day and age to be able to make huge impacts in the lives of children just by just signing a check. And, you know, and we've done it, you know, the best way to give is automatically, let me tell you. It's, you don't even think about it. It's just bill pay, it just goes out, goes out, goes out every month. It's not much. But I'm glad to learn that it's made a huge difference. Here's what this article says. Sponsoring appears to get under the hood of human beings to instill aspirations, character formation, and spiritual direction. In short, it trains people to be givers, not just givers. Wow. It trains people to be givers, not just receivers. Apparently, when you do this to a child in a community, doesn't matter what kind of religion they live under, what kind of government they live under, what kind of community it is. When you do that, it gives that child not just hope, but it starts to form in them a different person. There's a, there's a picture of uh, two drawings in this article. They've asked children to draw a picture themselves of them standing in the rain. The person, the child who is sponsored has, let me tell you the first, the, the child that is not sponsored is a picture of them under the rain. It's all in one color. It's drab, it's, 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 it's sad. The rain is hitting them on the head. And then you have the other child which is sponsored. It's got three different colors. There's an umbrella. <laughs> It's a huge difference. When people know that they are cared for, that somebody likes them, somebody wants them, somebody is looking out for them, a different thing happens to them in their heart. It makes a big difference to make people that are in need givers themselves. To tell you the truth, I'm not surprised. This will surprise you, but I was one of those children who received help when I was growing up. In the 50s, American Mission to Greeks was sending money to, especially my hometown, and through our local church. In the beginning of December, with uh, all the kids that come from poor families, with plus the orphanage kids, would actually go to the uh, child care center, where it was the, the building of, uh, for our, I guess today we call the uh, our children's building, uh, where all the Sunday school classes were and everything else, and uh, they would, uh, we would walk onto a piece of paper and they would just mark out our, our foot. <laughs> and then within four weeks right before Christmas, we would get a new pair of shoes every year. 
a couple of years, I think we even got some uh, American cheese oh, yeah. and powder milk, <laughs> <laughs> which was strange for me to taste, but hey, you know, it was great. This was in the 50s. And, you know, some of you that have only met me and Ren, you know, after we have been, what, what is the expression uh, that we use, self-actualized? <laughs> You know, I have no idea that this is what happened. So, but that's what happened, and that is a praise to God. It was God that did all that. Amen. There are people from America that were led to give by God. There are people that managed to do that. There were people like Dr. Spears or Diani. Then it was my father's aunt who uh, sponsored us to come to America. We not only did that, but also put us in our own house. Not only did that, but also made sure that we had a, lo a living relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Who was willing to sacrifice. She didn't have any kids. But she was such a blessing to so many of us. And it was God that imperceptibly, beyond our tithing, motivated Ray and I to support the second set of four children on three different continents. Praise God Almighty. These kids have grown and new ones took their place. We're still giving. It's, it's an auto pay, as I said before. But God is working in their lives to repeat another set of cycle of raising not eight dependent men and women, but men and women who are giving and becoming God generous in their giving. Jesus said, Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It will be poured into your lap. That's a pipeline. <laughs> I don't think there were, well, there were pipelines then in ancient, in ancient Greece and Rome. Pipelines for water. I think that's what Jesus was letting us know. Because he said that for, for the measure you use, it will be measured to you. You see, it's, I mean, pipeline doesn't shrink and, you know, it doesn't, it just stays the same. It's always the same. So it's got, we've got a big capacity to give, a big capacity to receive. All I have to say right now is I wish we had made a commitment to sponsor 20 kids. All this week I was meditating and memorizing this 2 Corinthians, verse, you know, chapter 9, 7 and 8, and it finally hit me, and I said, I want to become God's pipeline. As never before in my life. God has not thrown millions of dollars in my lap at one point. But over the years, we received plenty. My parents, Ray's parents, did not give us a huge inheritance, but we received enough. I have limited God's grace in my life. I have shortchanged myself. But it's not too late, there's still time. Some of you know, Ray and I are expecting our first grandchild. <laughs> End of July, I've got one more month, two more months. <laughs> two more months. Anyway, and you know, we are really blessed, you know, really thank you for your prayers and for our family and for our children and God has given us four wonderful children and we are hoping to get many more grandkids. <laughs> But out there in the horizon, okay, there's, I don't know, six, eight more kids who are now growing up. We're probably going to get married and have grandkids for us as well. And I'm just thrilled because this is above and beyond. I mean, no, no work on our part. <laughs> and God is continuing on. This is, the, this is the amazing thing, that somewhere in the horizon, in different continents, there are people that we have impacted with just a few dollars a month. It's not like a big deal. And it's not money that we've ever, you know, I remember, you know, when things are tough and, 
you know, and the bills are, I have to really pay attention, I have to get online and make sure, just like Eva does for the church, make sure there's money in the, in the coffin before she can, you know, send out a bill, you know, pay a bill, you know, I would do that, and I would, but I will never ever be to the point where I need to now stop that giving to the two organizations. Never had to do that. Fun, isn't it? Because it's not a lot of money. But it makes a huge impact over the years. He has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Now that's what God has done again and again. From the beginning of time, God, God has not been satisfied until every one of us, every one of his children, will mimic his extravagant generosity and become a pipeline of God's grace and giving. We all believe the book of James when it says that God is the giver of every good and perfect gift. Yeah. That's what God does all the time. It's in His nature. Yeah. And it's kind of mysterious because we don't really think about it. Excuse me. We have made up stories about Santa Claus because He has to give gifts once, once a year, right? At Christmas. Mm -hmm. So he's got this, you know, station up there on the North Pole. <laughs> <laughs> so does God also have like elf angels that are doing that? In heaven? Is, that what they're going? Is that what's going on? I, I mean, I'm trying to remember, you know, what, how does God do that? I mean, so I want us to do two things. Here, look at nature, first of all. The psalmist talks about how the wild animals of the forest look to God for their food. They cry out to Him. I mean, even the most ugly animals, they cry out to God for their food. <laughs> and God gives them their food. Okay? He gives them their food. Okay? How does He do that? He set it up that way. He set it up. Yeah, even after Adam and Eve made a mess of things, and now you have, you know, you have animals that eat meat. In fact, they would all have eaten grass, right? And vegetables. But now we have that. Even in that condition, even in the fallen nature, God provides Amen. for the carnivore and the herbivore. What about humanity? God does not have banks in heaven or gold coins that He throws on your lap from time to time <laughs> to get you out of, out of uh, a difficult situation. But I remember a time where we're in the midst of realizing that I need to get back to work to a paying job and a good friend of ours without asking said I want to give you some money I know that you need some money right now and that was a reminder that God knows how to work things out in your life and my life Amen. It doesn't matter what you're going through right now. It doesn't matter how you feel about your finances. All I'm asking you is just open your arms. Let God flow all His blessings to people around you. Amen. And it's not just money. It's not just things. It's your time. It's your compassion. Yeah. It's your caring. It's your words. It's your emails. It's your texting. It's, it's going the extra mile. It's looking at people and saying, you know, God loves you and I want, I see how what you need and I'm going to provide as much as I can for you right now. Because who knows, next time, I'll be the one that needs your help. God does not do it through elves or angels. He does it through people. Yes. Especially His people. Not only that, but God is expecting you and me to fill those roles. Not you and me. Jesus told the Samaritan woman that God is looking for a few good worshipers so that people can worship Him in spirit and in truth. And God is telling you and me today that God is looking for a few good pipelines. <laughs> a few willing pipelines to make His grace available to every community in the world, to every family and every person on the planet. What about you this morning? Did I convince you that you can become a marvelous pipeline of God's blessings? Are you willing to be God's pipeline today? It's not just giving money, as I said before, but it's also your time and your talents and your treasures and, and your wisdom and your comfort and all the things that you've experienced that you can teach somebody else that's going through it now. 
I want you to be a much bigger pipeline than me and Rhea. It's amazing what God can do with a person whose life, especially a young life. Young guys? A young life. When it's surrendered over to the Lord. What an amazing lesson. Can you pray to God right now, God make me a blessing. I surrender all you have given me into your hands. Make me a blessing. The pipeline of your grace, your abundance, your mercy, your forgiveness. If you are willing, God's grace will blow you away. For God loves the true forgiver. And God, in the Greek it says, has the power. Vinate has the dynamis to do what? To make all grace abound to you. So that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, not all the things, but all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Amen. Father God, we just praise your name, Lord, that you're an amazing God. <coughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus because Amen. you have shown us the way. Thank you that you said no to your own will and you said yes to God. At that crucial moment in your life when everything was hanging out of balance in that pressure cooker of Gethsemane you said yes to God. Thy will be done. Lord, thy will be done in our life, in my life in our lives, Lord, so that we may be your instruments of grace and giving in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Will you please uh, take out your response cards and write your response? Yes, you can put it in the box after, after the, uh, the communion. Will you do that right now? And I'll see if you have any prayer requests. Please do that.